Jay Ray, what is the number one sin? What is the number one cardinal sin in rap music? Okay, I feel like there's kind of two, but I'm gonna okay. do the first one. First one is biting. The first, mm-hmm. the first cardinal sin is biting. The second one for an MC is not writing your rhymes. You know what I'm saying? So biting and not writing, even though people did both. So. <laughs> Clearly. So I think it's so funny to me that Herbie Lovebug is like literally at the root of one of rap's biggest hip hop beefs ever. He, okay, so I've heard MC Light tell this story and who else? Yeah, I, I heard MC Light share the story with Nas. So it's, it's confirmed because Light said it herself. The reason why Antoinette, who is um, the only mm-hmm. MC from the Bronx on the Invincibles, excuse me, on the Idolmakers um, roster, was um, was kind of thrown into a battle with MC Light, was because Herbie, Herbie Lovebug, was working with up and, up and coming producers. And two of those up and coming producers, if I could speak today, uh, two of these up and coming producers was the audio, the audio two, two out of Brooklyn. Oh, you can hear so, the similarities in the production. That I'd never put that together before. So listen, here's the thing. So they were working on a beat. They were working on a record. Uh, they had come up with a, a concept for this record. Um, as a matter of fact, it was supposed to be a response to top billing because Top Billing was already a massive hit, yeah. like locally, especially in Brooklyn. Top Billing was already um, already had legs and was going places. So they wanted to, you know, again with the formula, let's do something that will, a response or some type of answer to get more people involved and to start to spawn another hit. And so at that time, Herbie and Audio 2 were supposed to be collaborating. And so, this the beat that you hear in top billing is yet another heavily sampled beat mm-hmm. in hip hop yes. and that's uh, impeach the president by the yeah. honey drippers mm-hmm. we all know that beat that beat we've heard it a million times so the fact that somebody else used that same beat you would think what's the big deal right but what happened is Herbie and Audio 2 were collaborating on this beat, and this beat was specifically chopped up in a different fashion because it's sped up, like top billing is sped mm-hmm. up. So they were working on another song that was the answer to it, and it was sped up in another fashion and chopped in a certain way. And Audio 2 had to go with MC Light. They went on tour, mm-hmm. and they were like, okay, we'll hear back from Herbie. Herbie's going to work on it, and then when we get back, we'll... um we're going to get busy and get to work on this record. They never heard from Herbie. What they did hear on the way back from a show in Boston, when they get back to, they cross over the bridge into New York and they pick up um, Mr. Magic's Mm -hmm. um, rap attack. They hear the song, the beat that they've been working on with Herbie featuring Antoinette on a record called I Got an Attitude. So, okay. So now this puts 10% diss in perspective. I never knew why they were on the hook with B by the, I never, this connected a dot for me that I just didn't know why. This is the Mm -hmm. why. Now it makes sense. Because it was like, why... It was like it felt almost out of the out of the blue. Why is MC Light attacking Antoinette out of mm-hmm. all of out of the blues? Nobody could figure it out. But if you listen, listener, go back and listen to um to ten percent diss. Yeah. In the very beginning, you can hear a recording of Mr. Magic himself saying, All right, now whose beat did you steal this time? And and you can hear Audio 2 saying, oh, snap. Oh, oh that's what I do. They're like, oh, snap. You know, kick this yep. one because they do the whole thing before the mm-hmm. hot damn. I, wow. I never knew hear, where that came from. 
<laughs> and you hear them say, "Let's put light on it." Word, yeah, because they didn't want it. They didn't want two guys attacking this girl, yeah. because it would just look crazy for two dudes to be trying to diss, a, you know, a female MC. So that is how this, for its time, was a major this war between mcs between female mcs at that well and here's the here's the the part though that oh my heart breaks for antoinette because that starts her off in a beef that she didn't have nothing to do with had absolutely nothing to do with and then according to her book her um her memoir she said that she was placed on the record not knowing the circumstances behind the record, but made to put out this record, which to me is probably one of the hardest, one of the hardest 12 inch singles from a, a woman MC ever. Yeah. I mean, just a beer beat and her yep. spitting because she was crazy. Yeah. Antoinette is, I mean, one of the dopest MCs out, right? Mm -hmm. So it puts her there, but then she was told that she couldn't respond. They told her not to say nothing because I, I don't know if maybe Herbie is feeling some kind of way that he realizes, oh, maybe I'm the cause of this. I don't want no friction. But she was told, don't say anything until she left her management. Because you can see the album right behind you, her debut album, Who's the Boss? Herbie Lovebug is actually nowhere on that she, album. She was gone from, and I never understood that either because this is only like a year a year or so later and she's already right. out of the camp and has moved on to another crew and now it mm -hmm. all makes sense because i'm sure she was like yo man like, what's the, yeah and that's and so then she was like well now that i'm not with herbie i'm going to engage in this battle which did not did not work out for her no great great rapper great mc great to me i love that album yeah. but because of all the because mc light already had such a huge following and it machine. just didn't bold the machine and she had a machine behind her she had atlantic records yeah. behind her whereas antoinette was on a subdivision a yeah. sub um a sub label of another sub, label yeah. of another label she was actually signed to a production deal she wasn't yeah. even a full-fledged signed artist so it that's one of those heartbreaking stories to come out of that whole idol makers camp and she really deserves a lot more um than what she had gotten 